Hello everyone. Today we look at the best things to do in Cologne. Have fun. A walk through the old town in the heart of Cologne is certainly an interesting experience. The Agnesviertel is particularly worth seeing. This district manages to combine historical monuments with an unconventional atmosphere in a trendy yet traditional way. Check out the independent bars, galleries, designer and bookstores at the Northern City Gate, Fort X and the charming Agnes Church. Arriving at the Ebertplatz subway station, you'll find yourself amid the attractions of Cologne's best Vidal. Just a short walk away you'll find the political exhibitions and exotic flea market of the Alte Führerwalk, held only every four weeks during the summer months, the Boulevard of Bars on Nusserstrasse, the art cinemas on Lübeckerstrasse and Ebertplatz, and the trendy cafes at the Lapidarium. There you will find many of the colorful classical buildings and cobblestone alleys that make the old town worth exploring. It's best to choose an accommodation in Cologne's old town north. Cologne Cathedral is the most visited site in Germany, not least because it is a popular destination for Christian pilgrims. Since 1164, the cathedral has housed the relic of the Magi, the wise men who came from the east to bring gifts to the newborn Jesus. Despite the large crowds, the huge Gothic cathedral manages to inspire awe in its visitors, both from the inside and outside. Accommodations near Cologne Cathedral are especially popular with travelers. In addition to the medieval Golden Shrine of the Epiphany, be sure to check out the pretty 16th-century stained-glass windows, various 10th-century artworks and the 14th-century altar slab created from black marble. For a small fee, the cathedral's south tower can be climbed, but beware, the 509 steps demand good fitness, a comfortable pair of shoes and about an hour of one's time just to reach the top. The view, however, makes up for it. From a purely technical point of view, the Hohenzollern Bridge is an attraction in itself. Consisting of three arches, the bridge carries pedestrians and trains almost 400 meters across the Rhine between the cathedral and the modern Calm Triangle office complex. But unlike the other city bridges, it's been taken over by the love lock trend that's sweeping Europe. Couples seek out the bridge to attach a padlock with their initials to the pedestrian walkway grate. They then throw the key into the Rhine, making it impossible to remove the lock without powerful tools. Under this expression of endless love, or rather under the sheer weight of all those padlocks, less stable bridges have already collapsed in Europe. The Hohenzollern Bridge, however, is more stubborn and shows no signs of strain, even though it now carries an estimated two tons of padlocks. The mighty Rhine has been of vital importance to Cologne for centuries. There is much less trade on the river than in the past, but boats continue to offer great views of the historic city center. The typical route takes you south of the Hohenzollern Bridge past the cathedral and on along the charming old town, past the renovated old port district of Rheinahafen with its chic, modern buildings reminiscent of the old cargo cranes. After a leisurely ride of about an hour, you'll reach the old fishing community of Rodenkirchen. A day at the Cologne Chocolate Museum, Imhoff Chocolate Museum, may not be exactly like Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory, but it's very similar. Run in collaboration with Lent and Sprungly, the Chocolate Museum is considered one of the best in the world. It covers the history of the bitter cocoa bean and its journey to becoming a delicious sweet. You can even watch the process in progress, as the museum has greenhouses where cocoa trees grow and miniature versions of many of the machines involved in chocolate making. The number one specialty of Cologne is exactly what you would expect from an important German city, beer and bread. To be precise, it's Kolsch, a locally brewed, straw-colored pilsner and Avon, which is not half a chicken, but a soft, dark rye roll with a thick piece of gouda and usually slices of onion and mustard on the side. The best place to try this simple but filling snack is in the old town. 
Here you'll find a number of traditional pubs and even several original breweries where the pale lager is made. Enjoy the happy, lively atmosphere in the pubs of Cologne's old town. One product for which Cologne is particularly famous is, well, Cologne. The legendary perfume was invented by Johann Maria Farina in the 18th century. If you like to invent and experiment yourself, you should visit the flagship store of 4711. On Thursdays from 3 p.m., you can take part in a 90-minute seminar in this historic perfume store. The store's experts will show you how to combine colognes with other fragrances to create your own individual perfume. These public classes are held in German only, but private sessions in English or French can be coordinated for foreign visitors. About a six-minute walk from 4711 is also a museum dedicated to the city's scent. It offers a 45-minute tour of the world's oldest surviving perfume factory. The Globetrotter chain of stores, which specializes in outdoor clothing and accessories, is popular throughout Germany. However, the outlet store in Cologne's old town is special because of its unique interior. How do you know if the jacket you want to buy is really the right one for you? Here you can test the waterproofness under a shower and check in the cold room how well the jacket protects you against the cold. It is also possible to try out kayaks in the water basin on the first floor of the four-story building. Globetrotter carries outdoor gear for most major brands, as well as several lower-priced options. The enormous selection ranges from boots to jackets, backpacks, guidebooks, bikes and mountaineering gear. A small restaurant and regular special events, such as workshops and guest lectures, make it a must-visit for anyone looking for adventure in the great outdoors. Unlike the cathedral, which is a good introduction to Cologne's glorious distant past, the Nazi Documentation Center tells the grim story of the city's relatively recent past. The unassuming building on a Pelhofplatz, once a Gestapo prison, now houses a permanent exhibition about Cologne under National Socialism. The basement of the museum houses one of the best-preserved prisons and interrogation centers from this cruel chapter of German history. In some cells, a total of around 1,800 wall inscriptions by former inmates can even still be seen. The upper floors contain examples of the documents kept by the Gestapo on the citizens of the city. There is also an extensive library and document collection. If you like unique souvenirs and original fashion items, go shopping in the Belgian quarter of Cologne. All the streets between Aachenerstrasse and Friesenplatz in the eastern part of the old town are named after places in Belgium in honor of the German victory in the Franco-Prussian War of 1870-71. Today, these streets are lined with trendy boutiques, galleries, live music stages and theaters. The Belgian Quarter is easily accessible thanks to its proximity to the Rudolfplatz and Friesenplatz subway stations. After shopping, be sure to head to Brussels Square in the heart of this area. The square around the charming Church of St. Michael is surrounded by bars and restaurants and is a popular meeting place for the young people of Cologne. If you want to experience this special charm, book your hotel in the old town of Cologne. Thanks for watching. We hope we could help you. If you have any questions, feel free to post them in the comments. See you next time.